Welcome to the Nightly Nuge. Welcome to the weekend edition of the Nightly Nuge. I think every uh, day is a weekend day for you, uh, Ted, but uh, happy weekend to you. Yes, happy weekend to everybody out there. A great, great time to be in the great outdoors. A lot of good hunting and fishing still going on across America, and the outdoor powers will cleanse the soul, so use them this weekend. Well, you know, uh, we like to talk about hunting, one of our two favorite pastimes, lifestyles, really. Um, and I have a question about something that's going on in Colorado, but uh, um, technical tip. Um, is there a certain poundage a guy ought to be shooting before he uses a mechanical, or what's your take on that? Well, I've been bow hunting for about 65 of my 73 years, and I guess you could actually go back to when I did the grand slam of stuffed animal toys uh, at the age of two with my uh, my homemade recurve bow and suction cup arrows. So I've been at it for a long time. I'm not quite Ishii or Fred Bear, but I kind of channel their spirit. So my experience is e extensive because I hunt all the time. I've hunted every year since I could walk. And when the mechanical broadheads first came on, they were uh, uh, inconsistent to say the least. But the modern mechanical broadheads are really very functional, very effective, and high quality, world-class quality. But because my wife, Shemaine, and I, Shemaine shoots 30 pounds, and that always causes much shock in the industry, she killed giant oryx, zebra eland wildebeest she shoots deer every year and big hogs and odd dad rams 350 pound odd dad rams with a 30 pound bow shooting a two blade knife cutting forward edge slicing broadhead which is key i shoot 50 pounds and i shoot every imaginable broadhead because i'm always experimenting and in my experience the modern mechanical broadheads are very effective if you're shooting at least 45 pounds but they work fine out of my 50 pound matthews and it's a matter of shot placement and waiting for the right angle you want to avoid that hard skeleton that hard shoulder bone the leg bone you want to get around those bones and go through the ribs but it's about patience stealth gracefulness and timing and Shemaine has never lost an animal because she waits for an opening to that crease with her two blade broadhead and I do the same even though I use some mechanical heads so they're they're world-class quality very effective but it's about shot placement and shot timing more than anything I agree with you on that you know uh, let's talk about an issue that's going on in just what used to be an incredibly awesome hunting state, the state of Colorado. Um, right now, there's some proposed legislation out there that is going to make archery hunters wear blaze orange. Um, I think it's an anti-hunting move across the board, but I'd like to hear your take on that whole controversy that's brewing in Colorado about making archers wear blaze orange. There is absolutely no evidence whatsoever to make archers wear blazed orange, except if you're stupid enough, irresponsible enough, and ignorant enough to allow firearms to be used during the archery season. Colorado, wake the hell up! You can't have firearms hunters hunting during the archery season. Now, when the archery season is extended and you can use archery equipment during the firearm season, then that has been well established. And then you have to wear blaze orange if you're hunting with the bow during the firearm season. Colorado, what are you doing? I got to tell you, Keith, in a state that is overpopulated, dangerously overpopulated with cougars and black bears, but you're not allowed to use hounds or bait on black bear hunting in Colorado. They ban the spring season, except that they will take our tax dollars and let the government hunters hunt the bears all year using hounds and bait. Are you kidding me? After the government hunters kill those overpopulated lions and bears, nobody gets the meat, nobody gets the hide, nobody gets the claws, nobody gets the skulls, nobody pays for food or travel or lodging or restaurants or hotels or, or licenses or fees or sporting goods or ice or beer or camping equipment. No, you don't get to spend any money to make that resource valuable. Our tax dollars go to hire a man with a backhoe and they bury these magnificent creatures in a hole in the ground. 
So if they're that immoral, if they're that out of touch, if they're that anti-hunting, then how can we trust the Colorado Game Department? And you Colorado Game Department guys that are listening to this getting all angry and squirming, that's because you're guilty and you can't even debate the guitar player because you're wrong, you're anti-hunting, and you're immoral. There should be an archery season that is just archery and you don't need blaze orange during those seasons proven all across north america and beyond but you don't let gun hunters hunt during the archery season and if you want a segment of a black powder season which i'm all for there should be no archery hunting during the black powder season and if they are just during that black powder season then you should wear orange but the the seasons should not overlap. I hunted with Fred Bear all my life, Keith, and he created the early standalone archery seasons as a more quality, quiet, less intrusive time with nature. It, Keith, the, the anti-hunting insanity that runs amok to some degree in all 50 states game departments is just unacceptable and tragic and we must fix that so if i understand you correctly separate the gun season from the archery season but if the archers want to use a bow during gun season then they got to follow the blaze orange rule then only sure then. that's been established now for over 50 probably 60 years well now you're up to speed this wonderful weekend and if you come back next week we're going to have some more of the nightly news have a great rest of your weekend ted thanks for this awesome week Backstraps forever, everybody. Aim small, miss small. God bless America.